Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain, and welcome back. Today I want to talk about some things that would kill relationships, or do kill relationships, regardless of how well the relationship seems to be going so far, they kill them. They just outright blow them out of the water, destroy them entirely, and there are four of them. And so this is the thing that I want to talk about today, and why? What have you been telling us about, like, where to find people and how to how to maintain relationships and stuff like this. Well, the reason why I want to talk about this is because obviously if you know what they are, then maybe you can avoid them. Or if you're already doing one or two of these, then maybe you can start looking at ways to change your behavior in such a way that they're no longer a problem. And so the first one that I want to touch on here is uh, is criticism. Yeah, number one, criticism. You know, if, if you've ever been in a relationship where nothing you've ever done has been right or like you it's not that you haven't forgotten to do a thing or, or that you've forgotten to do a thing or like you've just not done it necessarily the way that your partner wanted you to or something like that it's you've done it and as a result you're a bad person and you're terrible and you suck yeah that's where it is it's it's like you can complain or you can you can put across like that someone hasn't done a thing or they've not done it properly or or something like that but then if you if you're following that up with that extra negativity then you know it's going to kill your relationship it's going to start a breakdown because it's going to be a, a blaming of the other person for something that maybe just didn't deserve it and this is something that i see excuse me i see an awful lot because it's it it'll be um i don't know a, a guy has forgotten to to do something and as a result it's it's not just that he's forgotten to do that thing it's then all of the emotions that have welled up inside his partner are then being blamed on him or it's not that a girl um kind of got upset and and ran away from a situation or or anything like that it's the she um she ran away because of all of these other reasons that mean that she's bad yeah it's not a stating of fact it's not a, an analysis of of her actions it's a case of she did it just because she wanted to hurt you and even if she did or didn't you know it's it's still a a thing that then you that then people latch onto, and you know it's it's that that then allows them to blame, and it lets the, the blame game is is a game that lets you feel good about yourself whilst making sure that you have the upper hand on someone else, and you shouldn't be doing that to a partner, to someone that you supposedly love and care about. The next one is kind of fairly obvious. It's the most obvious and probably the most like negative and toxic, just outright. And, and this is kind of contempt and, and things like name calling or literally taking the piss out of the other person. Someone being very hostile towards you, you know, conveying um, kind of disgust for the things that your partner does or, or whatever else. You know, very, very much kind of putting that person down all the time in a very overt and negative way, you know, and, and it's... Like it sends a message that you just don't want that person around. If you're continually going to to call someone a name or or roll your eyes at every single thing that they say or always take the piss out of them, you know, then after a while they're just going to get tired of that. Yeah, you're not you're not going to you you're going to start adopting more of the negativity as 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 like they drift away from you just because it's all that you've got to cling on to. And they're going to move away because who would want to have the piss taken out of them 24-7? Who would always want every single thing, even if they're right or not, to always have their eyes rolled at? The odd eye roll, the odd you know joke between the two of you where you might be mocking one another. But you know, as long as there's a, a line where someone can say enough is enough then that's that's the important thing it's 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 the the contempt here is that the name calling is incessant and it continues to go and it's it's always dismissive you know it's always just ignoring the other person the way that they're feeling it's just that continual incessant thing and as a result you know that's fairly obviously going to kill a relationship right these these first two surely not too hard to understand but then we're getting on to the second two and these two kind of kind of work together um and so the, the first one is just tuning out, yeah? Just just disengaging, not, not listening anymore. And, you know, obviously 
you know, it doesn't really remove you from from any situation. It, it just shows that you don't care anymore. Yeah. And then leading on to the fourth one, because like I said, these kind of work together. So I want to talk about them together. Um, the, the last one is kind of being defensive because defensiveness is very much a way of kind of saying that it, the problem isn't you. It, it's 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 them, you know. And so being defensive, it, it only ever creates more conflict because it leaves things unresolved. It means that you're backing away. You're trying to step away from that partner that apparently you wanted to be with and, and so on and so forth. And now this is where it's these two things where, you know, you'll have lots of people being like, oh, well, if you argue a lot with your partner, then, you know, you probably don't have a great relationship. And I'd say that, that there's an element of if you're having a lot of arguments and the criticism and contempt from before are coming into those arguments, then, then yeah, there, there may very well be a case for th your relationship is slowly dying as a result. But the the counterpoint to that is that the conflict, the, the, the straightforward kind of aggressive shouting at each other that can happen with a, a, an argument in a relationship, you know, the, the defensiveness and the, and the kind of disengaging uh, can't be there. And as a result, you're demonstrating through that argument that you care, even if it's an argument over something small and stupid and whatever else, you know, you're, you're demonstrating that you care. If both sides of the relationship are going at each other like head first, yelling, screaming, shouting, and, and getting really upset, um, then at least you're showing that you care. You're showing that you're engaged. You're showing you're, that you're there and that it means something. It's important to you. And, you, you know, as long as you're not just being like hypercritical or just throwing names at each other, you know, as long as you're arguing about the thing at hand, even if it turns out to be a really horrible argument that you both need to cool off from and, and collect yourselves from and, and regroup again afterwards, you know, it still shows that you're that there's a very, very strong core there if you're both engaged like that. Whilst, you know, being defensive or just disengaging, trying to move away from it, trying to run away because it's scary or you don't really care enough about it to get involved, you know, these that that's where, you know, healthy relationships will argue they will have disagreements maybe it, the really healthy ones they they have enough of an understanding of one another that they don't happen often but they will still happen and when they do they'll probably be ground like earth shaking you know and and then the but then when they come back to it they'll be stronger for actually having that uh, upset having that breakdown having that that conflict yeah new growth will come from that and so again, like defensiveness, stonewalling, moving away, and and trying to hide behind things, you know, that's just as as damaging as being too aggressive with criticism and contempt. You need to hit that middle ground. Um, and as a result, you know, as I said, the arguing from that can be quite healthy, can be quite useful, and can really facilitate growth. Um, but anyway, those are those are the, my list of four things that that will out and out just kill relationships and my my feeling my my thoughts on this um when it, you know in regards to how to handle it would be just keep a track of yourself again a little bit of introspection a little bit of awareness of what you're doing what they're doing you know if if you're you're um, looking at this and you're seeing both the aggressive from from one partner and the the passive kind of defensive tuning out from the other um or the same thing from both on either sides, then then you know that relationship is probably not going to last very long unless they're clinging to it for another reason, yeah. And that reason probably isn't good enough to actually maintain them long term uh, without like serious problems uh, occurring along the way. Um, but again, you know the ways to to handle this. You know if you're the one being a bit too aggressive, try and dial it back. Try not to. Not to mock the person. Actually, ask what 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 it is that that you're saying, whether or not they're okay with it. You know, stuff like that. Because some some relationships are built on literally just a groundwork of taking the piss out of one another, like nonstop, and they turn out to be great relationships. You know, different strokes for different folks. But you you need to understand. You need to have that understanding, so that it doesn't become that contemptuous kind of negativity. Um, again, if you're being overly critical, maybe actually ask yourself are the things that I'm talking about, are the things that I'm criticizing, 
are they the big things, the things that are important, or are they the little things, the things that really don't matter? You know, that's that's an, another important thing to, to actually take a look at. And then again, if you're the one that's being defensive, if you're the one that's that's tuning out and kind of trying to back away, you know, do you care enough to actually engage? And if you do, then what is it that's making you defensive? What is it that's making it making you be more it's them not me i'm behind my wall i'm safe here it's them not me you know can you get over that is there anything that, that you need to talk to your partner about to facilitate that you know that's the that's the stuff that you kind of really need to touch on with that but otherwise guys i'd love to hear what you guys think and uh, otherwise thank you very much and i will see you in the video tomorrow take care Thank you very much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video then or found it useful at all, then please drop us a like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care.